Hello everyone, this is Yellow K9, and we are back with another tutorial video. Today we are going to be covering panning backgrounds. Which is when you draw a background and have different layers moving at different speeds creating a parallax effect to create a more 3D or realistic looking effect. All the while making each background layer seamless so that it loops and repeats so that you can loop it with a walk or a run cycle or anything like that. We've already got a completed run cycle right here, so we're going to start by drawing the background. Sometimes before I get started on the backgrounds, I will create what's called a mood board or inspiration board, which is just a collage of images that is related to the background that you're going to draw. So it gives you a sort of place to start, and it's a convenient way to organize all your reference photos so you have them right in front of you. These images can be anything from photo reference to illustrations or anything that's going to inspire you or give you an idea of what you kind of want to go for when you're drawing the background. So I'm just going to pull up Google here and I'm going to search Pine Forest and download any images that I'm going to want to use as a reference when I'm drawing the background. So you just go ahead and download any photos that you want to use in your reference board. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and place those images in a program like Photoshop. And you're just going to want to put them all on the same page and organize them into a sort of collage or grid. And once you save that out as a JPEG, you can just plop that right into your animation program. So now you can start by drawing the first layer of your background. And you're going to want to remember to just keep all your background layers separate so that you're going to move them separately. So like you'd have your foreground on one layer and then your middle ground, background, etc. on different layers so that you're going to move them at different speeds to create the parallax effect. So once you have drawn all the layers of your backgrounds, next we're going to look into making them seamless so that you can easily loop the drawings. But before I get into that, I'm going to first make the layer into a symbol which is going to help me organize and group all the different layers I have on the first foreground layer of my background. And making this layer into a symbol is going to allow me to tween this layer and move it. So I'm going to cut all the different components of this layer and paste them inside the symbol. So in order to make this seamless, you're going to have to copy and paste the elements of the layer and paste them onto the other side and sort of move it over so that it's going to repeat a certain part so that when this layer is tweened and moved, it's going to end up back in its original position so that way the layer can loop itself and repeat. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other layers. Again, I'm going to combine these two layers and make them into a symbol. And again, inside the symbol, I'm going to copy and paste the layer and paste it again on the other side. You might have to do some adjustments with this layer to make it seamless. So I'm just going to color this so that it blends together nicely. And make sure you paste it on the other side as well to make sure that it's the same on both sides. And same for the rest of your layers, you're just gonna again copy whatever you have on that layer and paste it on the other side. For the bottom layer, I'm not really gonna bother making a copy because since it's the farthest layer back, it's not really going to move very much, so it's not going to really have an opportunity to loop itself back into the original position. And the sky is just going to stay static, so I'm not going to bother making that a symbol or anything. And now we can get started working on the parallax effect. 
first I'm going to move this layer over to the right because this is going to be the starting point. It's going to move from right to left because that's the way the character is running. And then I'm going to want to tween this. We already have a symbol made, so it's ready to go. In order to tween this layer, what you're gonna have to do is right click it and select create motion tween. So now we're gonna make it move and loop. So we're gonna start by moving the layer on the last frame of this tween and aligning the layer with the original position. And we can paste the first frame of this layer onto the frame after this tween is going to end so that we can use the onion skin to make sure that the layer is going to align with its original position. And I just had to adjust the camera to make sure that the camera position was going to be the same for the layer that I have pasted here. So now here, if you look at the onion skin, you can see that some of the pine needles are sort of a different color. It doesn't really align correctly, which means that I'm gonna need to go back and paste some more of those pine needles to make sure that there's not a gap there and make sure that it's completely seamless and that it's going to loop correctly. Alrighty, and now I'm just going to copy and paste the pine needles and also the shadow on the trees to make this a seamless loop and make sure all the components are there on the other side and are going to line up correctly. All right, and now we are going to go ahead and tween the second layer. So again, you're gonna make sure you right click that layer, select create motion tween. And again, I'm going to move that layer to the right so that it's going to move from right to left, making sure that it's going to be in the right position on the first frame of this tween. And then I'm going to go to the last frame of the tween, move the layer over to, to the left, making sure that it's going to line up with the original position, like so. So you can see that I pushed the last frame outside of the loop area. This is so that there are no repeated frames because the first and the last frame are the same. So this is so that the loop can be completely seamless and that there are no repeated frames. I'm going to delete this frame later. And so we're going to continue to make our background layers into symbols, then tween them, then move them from right to left, making sure that each layer loops back into its original position. The last step is to space out your tweens and layers so that each loop for each layer is going to last a different amount of time. For example, your foreground is always going to be the one that's going to move quickest, and your further back layers are going to not move as fast as the foreground layer. So in order to do that, you're going to want to make sure that your foreground layer is going to be the shortest tween. It's going to loop around back to the first position in the shorter amount of time, followed by the mid-ground layer, which is going to be a bit longer to loop around to the original position, and the bottom layers, your background layers, are going to take way longer to loop around. The tween space is going to be longer. And your furthest back layer is going to move very slightly. 
It's probably going to take a lot of trial and error to get the timing and speed right for each of the layers. So like I just said, you're going to want to make the first layer the shortest, and you're going to want to copy and paste that loop and it's going to loop around several times, which is going to make it go the fastest. Then your second layer, your mid-ground layer, is going to be a little bit slower than that. For example, I'm starting with, it's going to last two times the amount as the foreground layer. And then I'm going to copy and paste that one so it loops twice. And you're just going to want to copy and paste more of the run cycle over again to lengthen it and make sure that there's enough time for each of the layers to loop back around. Typically with the back layers, I just make those layers loop for the entire duration of whatever time that you've determined is going to be the end of your loop, so that it loops once throughout the whole animation, and it's going to loop back around right when the animation is restarting or replaying or relooping around. You're just going to want to play around, tweak things, tweak the timing to make sure that Everything is going to loop back around and at the differing speeds to create that parallax effect. And you're going to want to export some of these animations to test them to see how they look. If anything's too fast, what you might need to adjust with the timing. and. The first export, mine was going way too fast, so what you're going to have to do is just add some frames in there, make the tween span longer so that it doesn't go by so fast, and then keep copying and pasting those loops and extending them so that they are going to be appropriately timed. Just keep playing around with the timing until you get something that's looking right. And so here is the final result. This is still a bit fast for my liking. However, I hope this gives you an idea of how to make the seamless loop in panning backgrounds. I really hope that wasn't too confusing, and I really hope that you guys found this helpful in some way. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment. And I hope to do more tutorials like this in the future. If there's anything you'd like to see, go ahead and leave me a comment as well. And have a good day. I will see you in the next video.